Hey everybody, welcome to episode 3 of Let's Preview Elite Dangerous. Uh, this is Premium Beta 1.0. So, in our last episode, we had taken our brand new um, secondary pulse laser into a conflict zone. We teamed up with the Federation and made some money on some bounties. So I've got about 4,000 credits. Not quite 4,000 credits. I'm going to do some more um, commodities runs. I'm in an agricultural economy here. So that means... Let's see here. What kind, of what kind of stuff can I move? Ooh. The galactic average seems to have ticked up on T. Get three loads of that. I can move liquor, but I can't move very much of it. Yeah, let's grab tea. I know those corporate corporate guys love them some tea. And with our brand new pulse laser, so now we have two of them, two class twos mounted. <clears throat> Any pirate silly enough to start something with me, or any single pirate, I should say. Silly enough to start something is going to find themselves in trouble. Alright. Time to get into hyperspace. And once we get there, maybe we can fly around a little bit and see the sights. Two. One. Hyperspace. Here we go. Got a little ways to go on this run, but uh, we'll take a look at some other destinations. We have a resource extraction site. We're able to get some money there. An a couple of unidentified signal sources. Hmm. This could be worth exploring. Coming up on 100 light seconds where I need to begin slowing down. So if you actually... Um, at 100 light seconds, if you slow down to about 80% throttle, you really don't need to touch it at all after that. You'll just pretty much be at exactly the right speed when you get there um, automatically. Okay, tap the C key and we're locked on our destination. All right, full pips to engines. I want to get to the station pretty quickly. So, um, I'm going to kind of assume that at any point in my video series, someone new might be joining and watching, so I'll kind of go through the docking procedure again. Um, when approaching a station, all the stations are going to be rotating. Uh, this is subject to change, but thus far, all stations rotate counterclockwise. So if you're not sure where to go, always fly towards the the station in such a way that you'd approach it so that you end up on the side that's rotating counterclockwise. It is possible to end up on the back side of the station or on the side of it and not know which side is the front where the docking port is and which side is the back. So just think about it a little, little bit. Find which side is the uh, quote-unquote front with the uh, counterclockwise rotation and you're good to go. Once you've established contact with the station, as in it's in radar range, you need to request docking. Request and that's done in the left navigation, or left menu. Now that I have docking clearance, it's telling me which pad to proceed to. I need to proceed to, P proceed to pad 6. Uh, and I'm going to slow down here so I can, you know, have less of a chance of cl clashing into someone. Request granted. Oh, my pad designation changed, looks like. Okay, the entrance looks clear, no other traffic. Fly in and look for our pad. Our compass will point us right to it, so it's down here. And then you want to slow right down. Once you're inside the station, go over to functions, deploy your landing gear, and we're set for final approach. Let's 
so it's coming down nice and slowly. Now I like to level off about here and then uh, start using some downward thrust along with my forward thrust. And we just get ourselves lined up. Whoops, not quite that fast. And that's it. We're landed. Yep, T is uh, not selling all that great. The demand is actually quite low. Uh, the demand is medium for animal meat, so we'll remember that next time. Terrain enhancement s enrichment systems. Okay, since the um, supply of these is high, they're going to have a pretty low price compared to anything else. Terrain enrichment systems. So you can see that's well below the galactic average. But it takes, you know, nearly 4,000 credits to be able to buy just one of them. All right, back to Aronin. So I'm looking forward to when they make that transition just a little smoother. It's pretty good. I mean, it's uh, the graphics are really nice, and it's actually like it has some that effect has some weight to it, but. It's not all that of a smooth transition. All right. I was going to remember to take a little bit of time to appreciate the sights. Oh, good. Here we go. Interdiction. Uh, this is not in federal space, so I'm, it's probably not a, st a stop and scan. It is, in fact, a Sidewinder. Legal status unknown. Oh, you poor schmuck. guy by the name of COD. You're going to shoot at me, aren't you? In fact, <clears throat> he already said, give me all that you have. Well, I only have one piece of cargo. And you're going to have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Search detected. Come on, COD. You big pansy, show me what you got. That's right, make a run at me. Thank you. I gotta keep my shields up. Rebalance here. Okay, I can pay for that damage no problem, but he should have a nice little wanted sticker on his on his ass now. Let's give him the old reverse aru. There we go, thank you. got nothing for me, COD. <clears throat> and I've got two pulse lasers with your name on it. Thermal overload. Okay, our shields are back up to full, so we'll go ahead and take the power away, put it into engines and weapons, so I can be more maneuverable and also longer streaks of firing. I'm sorry, son. It's too late for you. Oh, he punched out. <sighs> I don't know how he... See, that's the only thing about the beta. That's a little frustrating to me. Um, he was obviously able to super cruise faster than I would have been able to. I was still within mass lock range. It should have taken him a lot more time. To get into super cruise. And that's really why in those situations it's best to actually just run. 
because your chances of actually killing the guy are pretty slim until you get some serious firepower. Alright, dropping out. I'm going to rebalance my power so I can slow down and enter this station more safely. It's a pretty busy time of night, so I don't want to crash into any, into any other pilots if I can avoid it. There we go. Lining up nicely. Landing pad 19. Head over here and put our gear down. Yeah, I can see by the hollow squares there are a lot of other players actually online. Other premium beta testers. Alright, coming in for a landing. Let's back it up a little bit. Good enough. <laughs> Scraping along. Alright, repairs. What's the damage? Oh, that's not bad. Any modules get damaged? Oh, yep. Yeah. Looks like my pulse laser got a little damaged. No biggie. Alright, let's sell what we got. The demand here is low. Uh, okay. Um, we did learn that animal meat is a pretty decent run. But... I actually have enough to buy for animal meats. And back to Asilus Primus. Bam, into hyperspace once more. I'd be kind of curious to know what um, Frontier Development's write-up on frameshift drive is. Because like in, uh, for instance, in, S in Star Trek, warp drive is sort of the idea that you can create a bubble of space and then change the properties of that bubble of space so that the entire bubble of space moves moves through space so technically you're not breaking the uh, the fundamental law of the speed of light because you're not moving through space faster than the speed of light you have this sort of warp bubble bending space in such a way that um, space itself is carrying you along at faster than the speed of light I mean, clearly, in this game, we're able to travel at multiple times the speed of light, or seemingly travel at multiple times the speed of light, which is definitely very physics-breaking. Uh, kind of curious to know what their write-up is on, on the matter. Obviously, for gameplay reasons, you have to be able to do that, otherwise it would literally take forever to even get to the from one star to its nearest neighbor, so... You know, we have to have faster than light travel in video games like this. And there are a lot of theories out there that give us uh, some potential hope as far as being able to do just that. Such as being able to create or manipulate existing worm wormholes uh, to make them big enough to shove a ship through. The hardest part there is determining or controlling where the destination is. With an existing wormhole, um, if such a structure existed, then that would mean it has a source and a destination, like that episode of Deep Space, uh, Deep Space Nine is basically based off the fact that there's a wormhole, a permanent wormhole. 
But anyway, the wormhole would have a source and a destination. Um, so whatever technology uses existing wormholes would have to be able to um, either map out what the existing wormholes are, and that's sort of that's sort of how um, well, that's sort of one possibility. You map out what the existing wormhole is, and we just make it big enough, big enough for a ship to pass through. Um, the other possibility is we take a wormhole and we are uh, that already exists and through some technology we're able to manipulate the properties of that wormhole so that we can actually change the source and the destination and of course make it big enough for a ship to pass through the third possibility for wormhole travel is that uh, we develop a technology to be able to artificially bend space in such a way that a wormhole is created. Um, but that um, might fundamentally break some of the tenets of physics. There, There is a lot of study in the field of physics that says that it's actually impossible to create uh, a wormhole in a location where one doesn't already exist. It's possible to move a wormhole from where it is to another location, but it's not possible to create a new one. All right, let's get ourselves set for docking here. Docking successful. Easy peasy. I'm still blown away all the time by the visual style that they have so far in this game. No, well, that's not bad. About 400 credits, so 10% uh, ten percent profit there. So we can see the economy in these five systems is pretty torn up. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of money to be had, but it's not a lot. 4,600 bucks. We'll do one more run, see if we can't make some money on these catalyzers. Oops, wrong button. Launch. We'll make a loop. We'll check to Han, uh, Ibutis, and we'll actually, if neither of those two places want him, then we'll head out to the Anarchy Zone. So apparently in the beta they do have a um, quote-unquote crafting loop. Um, it isn't like a player crafting loop where the players can make anything, but um, materials and goods, raw materials are taken to planets that are refined. Um, those, the planets that are refining those materials um, can only refine the materials that they have or that are delivered to them. And then the refined goods are taken to industrial planets Industrial planets can only make stuff out of the refined goods that they have or that are delivered to them and then they make uh, products for you know other planets up up the food chain such as the um, high-tech industrial places which in turn make you know whatever it is that they make um, out of the materials and then those get can get shipped back to uh, the production planets. Okay, which pad are we at this time? 27, up this way? Just like that. So, you know, it doesn't take all that much practice to really get landings down. I think um, I had them really, really down after about a half an hour or an hour worth of playing. Alright, please buy my crap. For a good price. The lamentable tale of everyone who's ever shipped anything everywhere. Nope, they don't want it. Well, actually. Huh. Even though the demand is low, I'm making a killing on it.
All right, I should have just done this the first time I was here, but I didn't. Made a nice little tour of the galaxy, though, or at least our local system, local group. The commodities market gets me to about 5,000 credits. We are going to call that good for episode number three. Did a bunch of trading runs, tried to make some money, took me a little bit of time. Um, next time we'll check out some of the conflict zones and just to take a look at what's there. But until then, keep flying and stay shining. I was born on a rock where the stars didn't shine. Now I soar like a leaf on the wind. The clouds were polluted, the sea filled with brine. Now I soar like a leaf on the wind. I swore to myself that above it I'd rise Sail over the mountains and into the skies To see the stars brighter than man can devise I'd soar like a leaf on the wind Put me where I'll see stars so that I can see you And I'll soar like a leaf on the wind 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 Soar like a leaf